Welcome back to Flashpoint. North Carolina Republicans already gearing up for the 2024 election. The party looking to hold on to some gains made during this past cycle. State Republicans now just one vote short of a supermajority in the North Carolina House. Joining us now, North Carolina GOP Chair Michael Watley. Mike, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's good to be with you guys. Where do you see your party when it comes to uh, North Carolina voters right now and, and needing for change or something different? Well, look, I think the biggest thing that uh, the North Carolina Republican Party has been working on over the last couple of election cycles is making sure that we are listening to the voters of North Carolina and we are talking to them about the issues that they really care about. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons that we've seen the electoral wins that we've gotten. You know, when we have, uh, you know, 71 seats in the House, one short of a supermajority. We've got a supermajority in the Senate. Uh, we flipped the Supreme Court from 6-1 Democrat to 5-2 Republican. We've won our Senate seats. You know, there's a reason. It's because our candidates are talking to the voters about the issues that they really care about and that we are offering solutions to the problems uh, that we have here in North Carolina. And uh, that really resonates, and that's why we're winning. Yeah, your candidates overperformed, at least in comparison to the national candidates uh, this past election. Uh, why do you think it is? What, what's happening here within your party, within the state, uh, that, say, national Republicans didn't quite see the same success? Sure. Look, I think it starts with candidates and campaigns. And we have, a, you know, a really solid group of candidates over the course of the last a, a couple of election cycles that have run really good, solid campaigns that have connected with the voters of North Carolina. But then we also have closed the voter registration gap with the Democrats by half uh, over the course of the last four years. And we've also gotten our voters out. You know, we had in this last election cycle over 8,000 volunteers that were out there making phone calls and knocking on doors. And, you know, my favorite statistic in all of politics, if you have a five minute conversation with an undecided voter, uh, they're going to be 6% more likely to vote for you and your candidate. And we've just had a lot of those five minute conversations. So, uh, you know, it, it really comes down to candidates, campaigns and mechanics. But we've been able to hit that trifecta and do a really good job. You, you mentioned the, the state of affairs in the General Assembly and the advantage Republicans currently have. Um, do, you, do you think that they'll be able to work across the aisle, at least with one or two Democrats on some of these issues and, and override a governor's veto? I do, you know, and, and, and certainly uh, going to defer to the uh, legislative leaders uh, up in Raleigh to be able to work uh, whatever deals that they can work with it. But look, at the end of the day, the, the legislation and the policies that the Republican Party is moving is where the North Carolina voters want to be. And so if Democrat legislators decide that they would rather uh, hunker down and protect the governor and uh, circle around him to protect his vetoes than vote for the policies that uh, North Carolina voters are asking for, uh, they're going to pay for it in the elections. Um, the the uh, Democratic, uh, Democratic chair, Anderson Clayton, said um, that, that she feels like her party has sort of missed some of that and, and they've gotten caught off foot. Um, here in the state of North Carolina and that they needed to emphasize some of the same issues um, that they feel like voters really care about. Um, are you worried that maybe a newly energized Democratic Party might be giving you some competition here as far as taking it to the people about issues that people really care about? Well, look, I, I think that uh, she, she hit on a right tone, which is that you cannot ex ignore a large swath of voters across North Carolina. Uh, you know, the Republicans generally tend to have a rural advantage. Democrats generally tend to have an urban advantage. But, you know, we as Republicans, we need to be talking to urban voters, suburban voters and rural voters. We need to talk to all of the voters. You know, at the at the end of the day, we are 30 percent of this state's registered voters are Republicans. 34 are Democrat, 35 percent are unaffiliated. We are never going to be able to win without talking to all of the voters across the state and making sure that we're winning solid majorities within the unaffiliated and even getting Democratic crossover votes. So, uh, you know, we're looking at this election cycle and all of the new uh, voters that are moving into North Carolina as a tremendous opportunity, not something that we want to be worried about. Are you are you actively trying to court some of those urban voters who who may not always agree with some of the stances within the Republican Party? We do, you know, and when you think about it, the kitchen table issues that really matter for North Carolina families, 
you know, about jobs, about the economy, about public safety, you know, about roads, about schools and education. You know, those are issues that resonate in urban areas, suburban areas, rural areas across the board. And you have to be able to talk to all of the voters about those issues. Um, when it comes to the governor's race coming up uh, here in the next year or so, uh, Mark Robinson has indicated that he might want to run for governor. Um, are, are you supporting that candidacy yet or are you waiting to see who else gets in the field? Well, one of the beautiful things about being state party chair is that I have to be neutral in all of the primaries, uh, which means I get to be uh, supportive of all of the candidates. Look, we have a tremendous bench here in North Carolina. We've got a lot of really good candidates. And I know that when we come out of that primary, uh, we're going to be able to, uh, to support that candidate and go into the general election in really strong shape. I don't know what the field is going to look like going into that primary, but I do know uh, that across the state, we have a tremendous number of Republicans who can compete very well, uh, not just in congressional districts or legislative districts, but statewide. A similar question, but different race. Um, it looks like uh, former President Trump's gonna have some competition in the GOP primary already with Nikki Haley, possibly Tim Scott as well. Uh, Mike Pence. Uh, is there a candidate, knowing that as GOP chair, you're not going to endorse anybody, but is there a candidate uh, uh, among those who you feel like would do better here in North Carolina? Look, I will say this, you know, we, we carried North Carolina in, in 20. 12, 2016, 2020. Uh, I have no doubt that we're going to carry the state in 2024. You know, one of the neat things about being on the RNC uh, and being the North Carolina Party chair is that I get a chance to see and work with all of these candidates. And our bench is the strongest and deepest it's ever been. All right, Michael Watley, NC GOP chair, reporting, uh, joining us this morning from uh, the nation's capital. All right, Michael, thanks for coming on. We wish you the best. Excellent. Thanks, guys. All right, take care. More Flashpoint after this.